the sustenance or the continuance of the jivan muktas body is taken care of by prarabdha karma just as a fetus in the womb a child in the womb gets nourished because of the mother here is the jivan muktas body for whose sustenance no this no concern should be there take 86 stanza 86 garbhasthanam cha balanam nirvaho vapusho yatha jivan muktasya dehe pi निर्वाहस्यातपानकिम अन्वय फर्स्ट लाइन वेड सीन यथा गर्भस्थाना यथा गर्भस्था च बाला वपुषा निर्वाह तथा जीवन्मुक्त देहे निर्वाह किम न सम न सलस्ट्रेशन इज लाइक दिस यथा जस्ट एज गर्भस्था च बाफ चिल्ड्रन दट आर दोज विच चिल्ड्रन गर्भस्था चिल्ड्रन हु आर स्टिल इन द मदर्स वूम दैर निर्वाह वपुषा वपु बापुष of the body of the children that are still in the mother's womb their nirvaha nirvaha carrying on subsist subsisting on living the carrying on the living of the bodies of the children which are still in the mother's womb so it takes how because of the mother's nourishment the that is mother's nourishment goes to the child so the likewise here means illustration is it is automatically taken care of without any efforts on the part of the child that is what is important here so how the nourishment of the mother goes to the children etc is not the context here so a child doesn't do any any anything to get itself nourished at least after after born it may cry to draw the attention of the children or to draw the attention of the mother to get the milk etc or at least because of the hunger it will cry and the mother will come to know oh ho oh, the time to feed is feed has come at least that indication is there but in the mother's womb there is no such indication also and yet without any effort on its part the child gets nourished that is the only the aspect of drishtanta tatha in the same manner jivan muktasya dehe api even in the case of the body of jivan mukta nirvaha this carrying on means without any effort on the part of the jivan mukta in nasya will it not take place means certainly it will take place because of the laws of the karma the prarabdha of the jivan mukta will see that the body carries on so there is no effort on the part of jivan mukta so it should not be a matter of concern how this body will continue prarabdham pushyati vapuh the prarabdha nourishes the body of a jnani of a jivan mukta in this manner the question that was read in stanza 66 what are the question jnani is uttama purusha why is uttama purusha not a best person from the standpoint of the word he is atma swarupa is uttama purusha if that is the case is it not equally true that a mudaha a aviveki 
in reality also is a uttama purusha yes he is also a uttama purusha and the question was in what way the jnani excels the mudha who also in reality is uttama purusha that was the question that was raised in stanza 66 and thereafter words why asatva vid jivan mudha jnani excels the jnani and in what way a tattva vid differ from a lay person who is aviveki was answered till now and this topic is concluded here in stanza 87 samadhavatma rupena vyuthane bhogya rupatah sarvanandan sada bhunte मुक्तस्यातिशयो हयम अन्वय फर्स्ट एड जीवन मुक्त जीवन मुक्त सौ आत्मेण तम व्युत्था भोग्य सदा सर्वानंदा भुंक्ति अयम ही मुक्त अतिशय अयम ही मुक्त अतिशय दिस जीवन मुक्त ऑलवेज एंजॉयज ऑल द हैप्पीनेस ऑलवेज मीन्स वॉट वेदर ही इज एब्सॉर्ड इन द समाधि मीन्स वेदर इज माइंड इज एब्सॉर्ड इन द आत्मस्वरूप इम्पर्वियस of the world and one's own body or he is out of such samadhi he is out of such samadhi what is called as vyuthana so he is aware of the body he is body and the world even at that time so that is what always so jivan mukta always what is that always samadhau in the samadhi sarvanan sada 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 always सर्वानंदान भुक्ति ऑल आनंद ही एंजॉय हव समाध आत्मेण वेन दिस जीवन मुक्त इज एब्सॉर्ड इन स्वरूप इट इज कॉल्ड एज समाधि ही एंजॉय द परमानंद द ब्रह्मानंद इन द फॉर्म ऑफ आत्मस्वरूप विच इट सेल्स इज परमानंद ब्रह्मानंद आत्मेण समाध व्युत्थाने भोग्य रूपतः व्युत्थाने वेन इज आउट ऑफ समाधि इज ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ प्रारब्ध इज अवेयर ऑफ द बॉडी एंड द जगत भोग्य रूपतः इन टर्म्स ऑफ एंजॉयमेंट ऑल एंजॉयमेंट आर हीज ओन एंजॉयमेंट ही हैज नो कंसिडरेशन ऑफ द सारो एंड भोग्य रूपतः वट एवर भोग सेंस एंजॉयमेंट आर देर भोग्य रूप था मीन इवन इन द सेंस एंजॉयमेंट ड्यूरिंग द विथान समय वट एवर ही कम्स एक्रॉस ही इज माइंड इज फोकसड ऑन द ब्रह्म विच इज ऑन द स्वरूप एंड ही इज लीस्ट कंसर्न अबाउट द विषया विथान भोग्य रूप था सदा ऑल द टाइम वेदर इन समाधि और नॉट सर्वानंदान आनंदान भुंगते ही एंजॉयस दिस इज द एक्सलेंस ऑफ दिस ज्ञान अयम ही ही मीन्स प्रसिद्धि शास्त्र प्रसिद्धि विद्वत विद्वत अनुभव प्रसिद्धि अयम ही मुक्त से अतिशय दिस इज द अतय अतिशय एक्सलेंस ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ ए मुक्त लिबरेटेड पर्सन a jivan mukta person so in this manner do jnani and ajnani both in reality are uttama purusha we have seen what is uttama purusha yet jnani excels because of his discovery that he is uttama purusha he is able to enjoy the ananda swarupa all the time and therefore 
it was emphasized that Adhyani also should put forth efforts and gain the knowledge of oneself. In this manner, Prajapati taught Atma Vidya, Brahma Vidya to who? Indra. Finally, Indra got the knowledge. And how did the teaching start? Akshini Purushaha. The Purusha, the Sakshi Chaitanya, abiding in the eye, abiding in the eye, in the sense, the Sakshi Chaitanya, because of this, the eyes are able to function. Now, this Sakshi, Sakshi Chaitanya or Akshini Purusha, pointed out with reference to I, should not be misconstrued as abiding only in the I. In fact, same Sakshi, through different sense organs, organs of action, makes those organs, Indriyas, to take to their respective functions. And the same Sakshi is the one which illumines all the triputis, triputis, the triple forms of knower, knowledge, know, hear, sight, seeing, hearer, heard, and hearing. So like this, so all the triputis are illumined by the same one and the same Sakshi. That is, the Sakshi, whose knowledge is thus gained by Jnani, the same Sakshi, in union with different Indriyas, Tattad Indriya Sanyukta, so in association with different Indriyas, actually uh, Atma, Sakshi Atma cannot have association with anything because it is Asanya. Yet on account of Upadhi, it appears as though it is in association with all this. So, Tat Tat Indriya Sanyuktaha, what does it do? Tat Tat Triputi Bhata Karna, as though the illuminator of all these different varieties of Triputis with respect to each organ, Sarvendriyeshu in all the Indriyas, Apibhasate also, it shines. So, one should know, that is, the Atma, Sakshi Atma, whose knowledge was gained with respect to Indriya, Indriya Chakshu, is the same uh, Sakshi Atma, who in association with all different Indriyas, so illumines the Triputis, the triple forms pertaining to all these Indriyas, that should be known for this, the Shruti tells, the subsequent shruti. So it tells 8, 12, 4. Athayatra akasham. So now, wherever this akasha, what is this akasha? The space conditioned by black pupil, black pupil in the eye. Krishna taropa lakshitam akasham. Athayatra akasham. So this is conditioned by black pupil where, which, and where is that black pupil? In the socket of the eyes, in the Deha Chidra. So in the Deha Chidra, in the place Golaka where the eye is housed there. Continuing, Anuvishannam. Anuvishannam means Anushaktam, Anugatam, merged or associated. So this Akasha is which is associated with what? Chakshuhu. Chakshuhu. So that Chakshu, Chakshu, there, Saha Prakrutaha Asharirāha Atma. So that is the one, Saha. So that is there. So that Prakruta means the present one under discussion. Asharira Atma, the Atma who has no embodiment free from embodiment, chakshushaha purushaha. Chakshushaha purushaha, the purusha abiding in 
yatra akasham so this akasha space actually this space of course in the space associated with black people but that akasha refers to atma chaitanya sakshi chaitanya because in vedanta at places the word akasha is used for so uh, chaitanya atma brahma also so sa that is the asharir atma chakshusha purusha chakshya purusha the purusha sakshi atma abiding in the eyes and for he is tasya darshanaya for is seeing sai chakshuhu here is the chakshu in the sense for the atma abiding in the black pupil which is there in this place of i is the one for whom the chakshu the i is the instrument for seeing the form as a result of which the same atma appears as drashta the seer darshana the function of the i drishya the see and drashta the seer for darshana the function of the eye and drishya for see for all these which are called as triputis triputis means prayanam putanam samahara samahara the group aggregate of three putas three forms so that this way drashta darshana drishya of this triputi so he is what so he is the avabhasaka he is the eliminator one who makes us know drashta the seer darshana the functioning of the eye drishya the seeing so in this manner with respect to all the indriya this atma in association with them illumines makes us know all the concerned triputi with respect to all those indriyas mukte na buddha sakshesah sarvakshesu vibhavyatam tat tad indriya sanyuktah त्रिपुटीं भासयत्यसौ मुक्तेन बुद्धः साक्षी एषः और एषः साक्षी सर्वाक्षेषु विभाव्यताम् असौ तत्तद्रिय संयुक्त त्रिपुटी भाषयती त्रिपुटी भाषयती मुक्त बुद्ध एषः साक्षी दिस साक्षी विच साक्षी मुक्त बुद्ध buddha known by who mukta means jivan mukta the sakshi whose knowledge is jivan mukta has got of course the teaching was with respect to the chakshu so now it is generalized it is not only confined to i but the one who illumines all the indriyas and the triputi sarvakshesu with this in all the indriyas विभाव्यताम विभावत्याम इन द सेंस विभाति विभाति मीन्स मैनिफेस्ट शाइन्स और बिकम्स विजिबल तो मैनिफेस्ट इज करेक्ट वन द सेम साक्षी आत्मा मैनिफेस्ट इन ऑल अदर इंद्रिया असौ असौ मीन्स दिस साक्षी तत्तद इंद्रिय संयुक्त संयुक्त बीइंग इन एसोसिएशन विथ तत्तद इंद्रिया मीन डिफरेंट इंद्रिया सेम साक्षी 
being in association with different indriya tattad indriya refers to different indriya so what does he do he put him bhasayati elements makes no the triputi the triple form like drash drashta darshana drishya of course afterward the author himself is going to describe the triputi so triputi bhasayati so that means the atma known by the jivan mukta is the one which illumines or makes all indriyas function and illumines the triputis with respect to each indriya bhasamane sakshi tatve tad bhasa bhasya indriyam चक्षुर्व्याप्य प्रकाशये साक्षी तत्व भाषमाने तद्भाषा भाष्यम चक्षु इंद्रिय भाष्यम चक्षु इंद्रिय वियति अभिव्याप्य वियति अभिव्याप्य सर्व रूप प्रकाशये सर्व रूप प्रकाशे साक्षी तत्व भाष्यम when the sakshi tatva chaitanya swarupa sakshi atma bhav shines uh, here bhasa mane always it is knowledge principle where is the question of shining here uh, here shining in the sense in the triputi bhasa katve na bhasa bhasa mane so shines as the illuminator of triputi means one who makes you know the triputis that way when sakshi tatva illumines tad bhasa by its knowledge principle bhasyam chakshuhu this chakshu the i which is bhasya which is made known which is made to function so which is drishya so chakshuhu indriyam the sense organ i chakshuhu indriyam viyati abhivapya abhivapya having pervaded viyati in the space what space space in the black pupil where this sakshi chaitanya is illumining the eye abhivyapya sarvam roopam prakashaye illumines all the form that is sakshi chaitanya when associating with the eye make the eyes function thereby view the god me give the gives us the knowledge of the form including the one who is the seer drashta so why this is pointed out it is to show us that the very fact that the eyes are able to make us see the form should give us a clue that it is the sakshi atma which makes us see, see through the eyes means chakshusha rupa prakashena lingena with the linga with the clue with the sign of eyes making us see the form sakshi vibhavaniya the sakshi should be understood or known or cognize in the sense of enopanishad chakshushaha chakshuhu this is to give a pointer that whatever that we perceive through the indriyas should give us a clue that it is the chaitanya swarupa knowledge principle atma sakshi 
which makes us um, perceive through the indriya. Just as if you see the smoke, you should conclude there is fire. So perception is there, conclude it is the sakshi chaitanya which makes us see through the indriyas. Abhivapya sarvam rupam prakashaye. Now, what is the triputi? So, triputi was told, no? So that is uh, in the Tanda 88. Triputi bhasayati. So, the triputi referred in Tanda 88 is now being explained with one sample. Drishta hankritya vachinnaha darshanam chakshu shakriya drishyam rupam yam sarvaha triputi bhati sakshina Drishyam Rupaniyam Sarva Not Sarvaha, Sarva Drishyam Rupaniyam Sarva Triputi Bhati Sakshina In the book Drashta Aham, Drashta Aham Then gap is there Kritya chinnaha as though two words are given, join them. It is drashta ham kritya vachinnaha. Drashta aham kriti avachinnaha. Aham kritya vachinnaha, aham kritya vachinnaha. So it should be joined. Ahankritya vachinnah. The Ahankritya is a samasa. The words uh, involved are Ahankriti avachinnah. By what samasa it is like, vigraha is like this. Ahankritya avachinnah. That which is limited by Ahankriti, the Ahankara. Ahankriti means Ahankara. Ahankritya, Ahankritya vachinnaha drashta Chakshushaha kriya darshanam Rupam drishyam Iyam sarva triputi triputi sakshina bhati Iyam sarva triputi sakshina bhati Ahankritya vachinnah means ahankara vachinnah Chaitanya, that is drashta means Chaitanya conditioned by ahankara poses as drashta So ahankritya vachinnah that is means ahankara vachinnam chaitanyam is drashta The Chaitanya conditioned by ahankara is seer Chakshushaha Kriya Darshana. The function of the eyes in terms of seeing is Darshana. For that also prana should function. So what is necessary is Chaitanya is necessary. Chaitanya should eliminate. Rupam Drishyam. The form seen. That also is, is Drishyam. Drashta Darshana Drishyam. For Drishya also Chaitanya required because Vishayan Rupakar Antakrana Vritti must be there which should be illumined. So all these three Drashta, Ahankara conditioned by Chaitanya, Darshana function of the eye and Rupa form that is seen Drishya, Yam Sarva Triputi, all this Triputi, the triple form, Sakshina Bhati, is illumined by Sakshi in the sense if Sakshi is there, they are not Sakshina Bhati in the sense Sakshini Sati Bhati 
if sakshi chaitanya rupa atma is there it the all these are no if chaitanya rupa atma is not there jagadandhyam prasadyet nothing will be no all will be stupor only in this manner the triputi is made known by this sakshi chaitanya with and this triputi is ityadi imam triputi this triputi is what does sakshi do sakshi sada bhasayati sakshi always bhasayati not bhasayati bhasayati it still means it makes us know so sakshi makes us know the smeller the function of smell and the smell odor so this way it is true with respect to all the triputis and one who makes us know all these that bhasakaha is sakshi sahayeva that bhasaka one who illumines all these itself only is what atma it is atma and what is the nature of that atma uttamaha purushaha as described in stanza 62 earlier he is uttamaha purushaha the greatest the highest the one the the chaitanya swarupa atma avuttamaha purushaha so in this manner sakshi atma can be cognized or known not only with respect to i but with respect to all the triputis as the bhasaka the illuminator of all those triple forms and for this for distinct do do sakshi atma is the final illuminator of all the triputis the indriyas and the mind also are necessary indriyas are necessary to give the knowledge of specific vishaya shabda sparsha roopa rasa gandha mind is a common means to know all these and this is what was told now here in the subsequent mantra 812 812.5 it is pointed out among these among these means what among the indriyas and the mind the mind is an extraordinary faculty this mind excels the indriyas and therefore mind has a specific higher status compared to indriyas that will be explained in stanza 93 and 94 so with respect to that so in the case of nani how his mind is identical with ishwara's and that is ishwara's mind and he is able to enjoy all the bhogas that are there even in brahma loka again it is arthavada to point out that ananda paramananda is that the command of this jnani it will be pointed out the shruti for the first line of 93 is like this manah asya daivam chakshu this is explained in stanza 93 first line second line will say afterwards manah the mind is asya asya means atmanah of atma daivam chakshu so here chakshu is not i See the figurative expression as I. See, I is give us the knowledge of the form. Means the one means of knowing that way. Chakshu is used there. See this this mind is Atma the uh, of Atma. Daivam Chakshu. What is Daiva here? Daivam means here not divine as such. Extraordinary. Aprakutam means something unique. in contrast with rest of the indriyas so this is extraordinary 
that is out of ordinary and means it is unlike others it excels others daivam chakshu why the chakshu mind for mind chakshu is word used it is like chashte iti chakshu chashte chashte means pashyati anena iti chakshu that by which you see see here in terms of knowing in english also way did you see he means what did you understand did you know like this so in that sense so from that stand point daivam chakshu so that is explained in the first line of 93 in the sense the why it is superior why mind is superior to rest of the indriya the reason is like this indriyas are capable of perceiving the forms that are for the vishaya the sense objects that are in front of them in front of them means in association in contact with them this is true for indriya means vartamana kala vishayani chakshuradini indriyani indriyas are true in terms of their functioning with respect to the specific object means the presence of object must be there for the indriyas to function therefore they are not daivani adaivani means they are not special whereas mind is such thing so what is that if you are able to cognize at all periods of time whether my vishayas are there in front of you or in contact with you or not mind is able to know it can recall also it can think of vishayas also so that is what manastu in contrast with the indriya my mind is what trikala vishayopalabdhi karanam it is the upalabdhi karana it is a instrument of cognition at all the time whether the sense of are present or not therefore it is adaivam again indriyas are meant for specific purpose of seeing hearing tasting etc in the sense eyes can see but can't hear ears can hear but can't taste like that so it is the function is divided where in the case of indriya whereas mind not only does the manana vyapara not only does the manana vyapara means not only it is a common means of cognition with all the sense perception but also it is a karana a sadharana karana as a common means for all the function because without the mind nothing can function even what happens to gain the knowledge mind is necessary in the vishuddha that is mind is meant for sarvavyapar and it is a common instrument for gene for all the functions and also in vishuddha manas vishuddha manas in the very pure mind what happens even the sarveshwaraha the parameshwara gets manifest gets manifest not only that atmanubhava is also possible only in mind manasa eva idam aptavyam ti from one side yato vacho nav nivartante aprapya manasa sah atma sakshi is the one from whom mind at speech retire without being able to objectify it that is true in the sense of objectifying sakshi atma but to know atma the mind has to assume the atma swarupa atma kara free from all the drishya vishayas and all the free from all the drishya vishayas and vishaya bhasa so that will be the case so to gain the knowledge 
mana mind is not a pure mind is necessary which assumes the form of atma so which becomes atma akara and from that standpoint for atma anubhava mana is necessary mind only can do that in this manner see so mind is necessary for all the vyaparas whereas indriya are only for specific and, and that is the reason why mind is called as daivam chakshu daivam chakshu this is explained in the first line and in the second line same shruti continues savai yeshah savai yeshah mean this jnani when we have got the knowledge who is that muktah when we are liberated swarupapannah so the savai yeshah yeshah is described by bhashakara like this when we are muktah when we jivan mukta why jivan mukta swarupapannah he has discovered it swarupa so and thereby he is disassociated with all upadis so therefore avidyakrita dehendriya manoviyuktah one who is free from identification with the deha indriya mana which are products of avidya avidyakrita dehendriya manoviyuktah as a result he has discovered the atma in it oneself as the atma in all sarvatma bhavam apannah san being the one who has discovered the sarvatma bhava sarvatma bhavam apannah san savai eshah so the one who is like this mukta we have got the discovered swarupa one who is no more identified with the hindriya etc one who has got sarvatma bhava that eshah so etena na daive na chakshusha as a result of this he is upadhi also is very pure mind vyomavad vishuddha sarveshwara mano upadhi because sarvatma bhava is discovered his upadhi is no more the vesti upadhi the one as his own antakarana he has discovered the identity with ishvara so therefore now this esha this mukta is what now vyomavad vishuddha pure like vishuddha the pure like vyoma akash and his upadhi is identical with ishvara upadhi sarveshwara mano upadhi san is at physical he is identified with virat at subtle level he is identified with the hiranyakarpa at causal level identified with the ishvara so therefore in this manner etena daina chakshusha manasa by this manas which daivena manasa not ordinary mind extraordinary mind and that mind which is identified with ishvara's mind ishvarena manasa so with that means in being identity being in identity with parameshwara jiva brahma has already been discovered jiva brahma aikya jiva brahma aikya has already been discovered as a result do you know what happens etan kaman pashyan ramate he rejoices enjoying all this kama what are those etan kama savitra prakashavat nitya pratapena darshanena for him all bhogas are as clear as the sunlight again don't take literally that he is undergoing all the bhogas means he is sarvavyapi chaitanya and being sarvavyapi chaitanya all bhogas have to fall at the altar of sarvavyapi chaitanya with oneness identity with sarvavyapi chaitanya he has discovered therefore etan kama pashyan so enjoying all these bhogas 
Ramati, so he rejoices. The question will come, what are these etan kama? So these bhoga, desired object, so the question is kam kama, so that they are specified now in the Shruti. Ya ete brahmani loke, ya ete means ye ete brahmani loke, 8.12.5. All these bhogas that are available in the Brahma Loka being identified with Parameshwara as Sarvavyapi Chaitanya, he rejoices. This portion is explained in second line. In short, in this Sandha 93, of course, this is explained in 93 only, not 94. 94 speaks of Oh, that is, all devas also got the knowledge. Earlier I told you that 93 and 94 explain this Shruti, 8, 12, 5, no. Ninth, first line as it is, Daivam Chakshu. Second line, all bhogas are at the altar of this Jivan Mukta. From 8, 12, 5, Shruti is explained. Take the Shruti you know, mantra, this stanza. Manosya Daivam Chakshusya Kalatraya Vibhasana Tena Bhumte Brahma Loka Sthitam Kaman Nijatmani Manaha Asya Daivam Chakshuhu Sya Kalatraya Vibhasana Tena Brahma Loka Sitan Kaman Nijatmani Bhunti Manaha Mind Asya Asya means Atmanaha of this Atma Daiva Shuhusya is, Syat means is, Bhavati. What? Daivam Chakshuhu. Daivam Chakshu is what? Extraordinary sense. Extraordinary eye means extraordinary means of cognition. Unlike Indriyas, unlike other Indriyas. Syat. Why so? Because Kalatraya Vibhasana. It makes you know everything, not only in the presence of Vishayas, even otherwise, everything, it makes you know, it functions from the from standpoint of everything. Tena, by that daivena manasa, by this extraordinary sense, mind, so this jnani, even mukta, identified with Parameshwar Sarupa, Brahma Loka Sitan Kama, all the sense pleasures that are there in the Brahma Loka, Nijatmani, in one's own Atma Sarupa, Bhumte rejoices for it. So, being Atma, being the one at whose altar all bhogas fall from Atma Sarupa, this person is enjoying.